Unbelievable stuff going on here. We're into quarterfinals. This is heat number two. Mick Manning, Connor Coffin, Dane Reynolds, Ricardo Christie. And we got to tell you that the Hawaiian Airlines Best in Class Award, a single surfer who has the highest heat total at the end of the band's Triple Crown of Surfing wins $250,000 Hawaiian Air Miles. That's roughly five round trips. And we think that it is... Yeah, John John Flora, it's an 18.63. That is potentially, that could hold up even through the five masters. That's big. Big stuff right there. We see the lineup. Mick Fanning, he is serious on the beach. He was into his scene. Let's take a look at him, sir. And again, probably very inspired watching John John Florence in that last seat. Pretty cool stuff. As he is now approaching the channel, a couple more big turns. For a surfer that's surfing in this event, not waiting for anything, he goes, you know what, I'm going to go to town because I'm going after a fourth world title. Next up, looking for a cover, looking for some shade. It's oh. Connor Coffin. Coffin, is it a done deal that he's on the world championship tour since he's in the quarters? Uh, he's, uh, I'll look at the tally real quick and give you the numbers. It's not a done deal because there's some variables here. There's some fellas behind him that could potentially pass him and uh, some guys in, in ahead of him that can improve. So it's definitely not a done deal, but he is improving as we see Dane Reynolds in yellow. Big, strong cutback, but that wave looks like it's a bit Fatima, so he's gonna kick out of that thing. And then in blue, Ricardo Christie. I think this is the best wave so far in his heat. Totally agree. Really clean, stretching across the inside bowl, and now it's gonna back off for him, and he gets slotted, stand-up barrel for the tall Kiwi, that's huge. And then he backs it up with a wicked snap, kind of a rock and roll floater. So wow, what a start for Ricardo. He's gonna be psyched. Okay, real quick, there was a count back on that last heat. Jack Robinson, Jack Freestone, they tied with 11.40, and Robinson got the nod. As we take a look at uh, more surfing here, and it's a Mick Fanning's wave. Yeah, Mick Fanning, watch this clean wrap right here. I love the way Mick just seems to continue his crazy uh, style and technique, even at tricky sunset. You know, sunset can make people look different, uh, where they're just kind of surviving. They're not surfing really the way they want to, as we see crazy angle here of Ricardo Christie getting shacked. This is gonna look cool, look at that. Big vertical snap, and then rocks the tail. Actually got airborne coming off of that snap, so that was, uh, you know, that's gonna be, well, there it is, an 8.67 for Ricardo. What a start for him. Really solid wave. I was actually concerned for him when he came out. I thought he was just being a little too cash. Guess what? Continue the action here, and it is our surfer in blue from the north, uh, east coast, North Island, New Zealand. Big wrap, big closeout. You know, sometimes you come out and you feel so good you wanna stand and maybe make a, uh, a non-claim claim, and you'll get knocked off your feet here. There's so much war. Ricardo Christie, your leader, looking to replace a 327. McFanning looking for the bomb out the back. He's got an 8.0. He sits in the second spot, but it's Ricardo Christie with an 8.67. Well, right now uh, there was a quick one. Ricardo Christie, a 207, and still waiting on Mick Fanning. He's got the 8.0. It's the second highest score out there, and he now has first priority. I'm gonna wait for a couple of these other scores to come through. Well, it was Mark Richards winning back in 1975, followed by Ian Karen, Sean Thompson, Buzzy Kerbox, and during the break, we saw this, Dane Reynolds. There we go, and that is what Dane's known for. Hefty turns right in the craziest part of the way, but Dane, uh, I like the fact that he took off on the inside there, looking for something to work with, and here we go, live action, this is Mick. Nick Fanny's waited a long time for this wave. It looks like a little soft shoulder. Maybe it'll stand up on the inside here. A little white water section. And he was open for some big, throaty, nasty barrel to go in and out. And uh, he gets a couple of turns in. Let's see if it helps his cause. I'm just trying to find a rhythm. You know, a lot of times some guy, you know, guys will take off in a wave knowing it's not a full-blown keeper, but they just want to get out of sitting on the outside. During the break, Connor Coffin find himself a really nice wave, very clean. Wind is perfect. That's his second strong carve. And then got a third layback hammer. Wow, very strong carve right there on the inside bowl for Connor. So he is going to be more than in the mix. And again, Mick Fanning, I, don't, I think he took off in this wave knowing it wasn't going to be perfect. But sometimes when you're sitting on the outside, you just kind of get stale. You have to break that rhythm, catch a wave, and get back in rotation. Yeah, you just... Um Got to be careful you don't get caught because the swell's changing, it feels like. And um, yeah, John John snagged all the all those nuggets on the inside, so uh, I want a piece of those, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go, Jack Robinson. Looking forward to more surfing from the young phenom. Back up to you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, 
Just a casual kid, just taking down and scalping everybody and moving through. Yeah. We're going to see a lot more of this 17-year-old coming up uh, on 18. It might happen during pipe. He, he does have a shot at that uh, invitational. But what happened to Ricardo Christie here? Uh, first of all, it's so crazy how smart Jack was. He picked up on his mistake there. Uh, so I think he'll be deadly in the semis as we see Ricardo. Just got a little hung up there. You know, he was trying to get a little bit of projection, maybe even release the fins a bit on that turn, and he kind of got stuck and went over the handlebars. Body momentum takes him one way, board's going another way. Dane Reynolds. Reynolds got one section, he's got to go underneath. Now he gets to the open face. Here's a section ahead for Dane. What's he going to do? Goes for the throat, big move. And he closes it out with a very unique, putting it on rail, tucking underneath the lip there. And that does not work quite out for him. Dane Reynolds needs a 5.24. Uh, he just was trying to jam that last turn right before that wave closed out at a, on the inside bowl there at sunset, but just got a, a piece of rail stuck in the water. Couldn't really come out of that last turn, which is too bad. Had he made that last maneuver, it would have been a big score. Running and gunning is Ricardo Christie, your heat leader, trying to better a 3-2-7 in a score line. Here comes Kaufman now, using his priority. Beautiful big wrap, and look at this wall ahead of him. The moment of truth is coming. Another wrap. Here comes the big wall. He's going to... Well, get underneath the section and pull another wrap off. And Connor Coffin looking for a 4.24. Right behind, it's Mick Fanning going after a fourth world title here at Pipeline. And he gets just a bit off balance. Lots of speed, big closeout. He straightens out, looks back at the wave. That's a sizable wave. Again, you're looking at scaffolding where these big cameras are looking down. And that's a solid eight foot face, eight to 10. Uh, it just makes me smile. This is classic sunset. I mean, it really is. This is one of the better days I've seen out here at sunset for a contest. It is on fire out there. And Connor, this is a crazy carve. I like this setup snap, but this maneuver right here, watch how much rail gets in the water. That is textbook power surfing right there. That will be handsomely rewarded. It's too bad he didn't get one last turn in. You know, that wave got a little funky. He was waiting for the barrel and obviously it just kind of clamped shut. But I, I think the judges will be psyched on that second carve. Textbook little arc there from Mick to start things off. He always has a tighter radius than a, a lot of the other guys on tour. He's, again, he's known for that torque, but again, that inside bowl shutting Mick down as well. So he really wanted to get one more maneuver in there to kind of you know break into possibly that excellent range, but that inside bowl didn't cooperate from Mick. Uh, but beautiful wave there. Look how perfect it is out there with this easterly wind. 5.25 on the clock, first priority with Dane Reynolds. There we go, how's that crazy airborne takeoff on the peak? Very whitewashy, soupy, just a funky wave for Ricardo, but he, you know, he thinks maybe I have a chance to get around, but just slipped a little bit, and uh, that wave breaks right on his back, and for sure he is getting ragdolled underneath the water, contorted. You can actually even get uh, hurt underneath the water here, even though you're not gonna hit the reef. Uh, it's easy, this wave is so strong, it just kind of pushes your arms and legs in, in different directions. St starts tearing limbs off. Starts tearing limbs off, but as you said, he is tough, and he, he's paddling back. Well, for sure, when he started paddling for a wave, it, it looked like it had potential, but it, you know, it didn't unfold that way. As we see Dane, another prone drop-in. Yet, the takeoffs sometimes aren't that pretty, but the inside section is a charger. Dane going for the cover-up. Guy drops a low line back into the high line, another little section. Dane Reynolds looking for an 8.83 to get back into the hunt. Dane's got a couple of fives, a 5.67 and a 5.27. We kind of started off slow. Now everybody's getting some scores in, 4.13 on the clock. There's the channel, there's the caddy, there's our cameraman, and the Hawaiian Water Patrol headed by Terry Ahui doing a phenomenal job. Oh, yeah, these guys are staying busy and alert all day long. And again, Dane has to ride that crazy bull. It's so tough to get to your feet when you're getting bucked around on those prone drops in. Gets a nice barrel there. That thing stayed open all the way to the channel and he got a little secondary barrel through the inside. Um, but again, I don't think it's gonna be anywhere near the 8.83, but it should better his situation because he will get rid of his uh, 5.27. Did I see a double arm grab in there? His left arm going in yeah. there, even trying to slow him down more. The idea is to hide from the judges. Uh, Sunset is notorious for actually giving you too much speed. You know, a lot of times on tour, you're trying to go as fast as possible. At Sunset, you are flying. You know, it literally is like going down a mountain out there. And there's where he kind of got extended through that backwash. And here he'll try to slow himself down. Got both hands in the water. He's trying to wipe speed off. 
You can see his eyes too. That was such a cool shot from the channel. He's trying to wait for that wave and, and try to predict when it was going to clamp shut, and it stayed open for him. How unbelievable was that shot? Unbelievable. Is that Larry Haynes in the channel? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, you're right. He, he could, you know, barely put a jersey on. It looked like a dress. He was such a grom. As we take a look at uh, Christy, you got it. This guy is a battler. Now, Christy was leading from the outset with an 8.67. 8 Things have changed. Christy is now in fourth, needs a 5.83. Dane Reynolds last wave, a 6.53. Is it Dane Reynolds again? Is this a replay? No, it's a new wave, and he's got a long section ahead. This is going to be a tough one to make, and yeah, he better. Better judgment right there, instead of going for that big closeout. Dane Reynolds wow. needs a 7.97, hasn't given up one bit. Well, Mick he's, Banning is your new leader. He's uh, Dane Reynolds is in a good spot to find one of those pits on the inside bowl. We saw John John do that in the heat prior. Another double hand stall there for him, but maybe not long enough to get that 7.97. You know, he would have had to get more time in the tube to get that excellent score. But again, that inside bowl is dangerous. You know, for the other competitors, if they just get kind of stuck on the outside, you can be really creepy in there and get yourself a great barrel. So he was really close to getting a big score, but it was just a little too short. Sunset playing hardball with Dane Reynolds. Dane Reynolds coming back. I'll tell you, he's done everything except drop his back foot in the lineup like some of those longboarder guys that stick their foot off the back. <laughs> you see at Waikiki, Reynolds is doing everything. He's got the speeds, and now he needs to slow down to make the barrel. Sure enough, it's McFanning with an 8.0, has the lead. But I'll tell you, if somebody overtakes the lead, who, who drops the second would be Connor. And in the closing minutes, so giving it his all, Ricardo Christie, a fan favorite here. He needed to make the finals. Connor looks over his shoulder, says, Huge. what happened? Big break for Connor and Ricardo coming unstuck right there, and it looks like that's going to be his ticket possibly to the top 10. Huge result for Connor Coffin. Score coming through for Dane Reynolds, not going to factor. Looks like Ricardo Christie, unfortunately, is going to bow out. Mick Vanner. And Connor Coffin tie and move through into the semifinals.